As early as June 9th, 1914, Pope Pius X decides to introduce at the court of Rome the case of the little Carmelite who died 17 years before. after a thorough inquiry, the apostolic process is formally closed on October 30th, 1917. In 1919, contrary to ecclesiastical law, Pope Benedict XV authorizes the College of Cardinals to reopen the proceedings which will lead to the beatification of St. Therese, 26 years after her death. By Jozen Seo Lexodien, Beatificationis et Canonizationis Serve Dei Sororis Terisiae, Aquero Jesus Monialis Profeste Ordinis Carmilitarum Excalcetarum in Monasterio Lexodiensi. Little Thérèse Martin was born at Alençon on January the 2nd, 1873. Brought up by exemplary parents, she had known a happy childhood. And then Puss in Boots arrived at the camp. Tarabum, 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 tarabum. <laughs> go on, Papa. What did he say, Puss in Boots? He said you must say good night to Papa and go to bed. Five minutes more. No, you always get into her. She's my little queen. There. Therese matured early through a series of painful experiences. your mother for the last time. And go downstairs with Louise. Yes. You're not crying, Dorette. A short time after his wife's death, Monsieur Martin and his children moved to Les Buissonnets, their villa at Lisieux. Ten thousand men were crying. However, some of the soldiers were laughing or trying to. One soldier, in a mad fury, had sworn to place another bundle on the fire. But whilst Joan of Arc was dying, he suddenly became ill. His comrades took him to a tavern for some wine to help him get his strength back, but he was unable to recover. He cried out, we are lost. We have burned a saint. Well, go on, Papa, continue. No, no, it's late. We'll continue tomorrow. I'll be like Joan of Arc. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're Joan of Arc, why don't you go close the garden gate? Now, now, Leonie, you know very well she's afraid in the dark. No, Papa, I'm not afraid at all. Oh, well, then, come. Come along. Well, go now. Despite her sensitive nature, Therese learns to be master of herself.
It is during moments such as these that her spiritual calling was revealed. Well, my little Joan of Arc. I locked the gate, and if you want me to, I'll do it every night. <laughs> That's a good girl. But soon Pauline, her little mother, enters Carmel to become Sister Agnes of Jesus. The separation is a terrible blow to Therese. Yes, Father. It is here that my life has begun. It is a mistake to call life that which must end. an orphan. It is too much. <laughs> this is a trial which seems to be an attack upon Therese's calling. So painful is it that Therese is taken ill. Tell me, Marie, do you know at what time your father will return? About seven o'clock. Why do you ask? Tell him I'll be back after dinner. I have to speak to him. You must try to be brave. Cured, my little Therese. You're cured. Tell me, Therese, was it the Holy Virgin who cured you? Yes, it was. The Holy Virgin looked at me and smiled, and I felt better. A number of doctors declared that Therese's recovery had been complete and instantaneous. Several years have gone by. Marie, too, has entered the Carmelite order. She has become Sister Marie of the Sacred Heart. The visiting room, which before was a source of tribulation to Therese, is now one of her greatest joys. 
of us on the same date. You to pronounce your vows, I for my first communion. It must have a significance. I've been thinking about you this morning. What have you given to Jesus? I have already offered, during my two months of preparation, 3,700 acts of love and sacrifice. More than 50 a day. If God is not able to count, it means someone else will do it. Yes, all that deserves was my liberty. I asked him to take that away from me. You asked for the most difficult. Sacrificing by half and worthwhile. And you, Pauline, what did you give him this morning? My whole life. Because I know what his answer will be. He'll answer, now it's my turn. It's true, Therese. We must prepare for God's turn. God's turn. As Therese grew up, her resolve was unshakable. I'm going to hurt you, Father. To hurt me? It'll be for the first time. It'll be the last, believe me. I must send to the karma. Why you too, my little queen? It's asking a great deal of you. Having given Pauline and Mary, you believed that I'd stay by your side. I'm not thinking of myself. But of you. You're very young to take a decision of this nature. Oh, no. I'm not a child anymore. Since Christmas, I've changed. I'm not the same girl. There's a saying I feel I must belie. Never was found soul pure, loving more than soul repentant. I'm sure that I'm able to save sinners and make God love more than he has ever been. I shall not try to keep you from him. It is an honor. God has summoned all my daughters, one after the other. May his will be done. <laughs> I gather this, he gathers you. I have nothing better to offer him. Encouraged by her father, Therese seeks admittance to the Carmelite convent at Lisieux. However, the superior of the community, Abbe de la Troette, declines her request because of her tender years. Furthermore, the Bishop of Bayeux refuses to overrule this decision. My poor child. We have tried everything. No, not everything. Rome. Rome? Yes, since we have to go there. I will see the Pope. He will listen to me. I shall enter Carmel even if I have to walk through flames. <laughs> Remember, you must proceed in silence. It is absolutely forbidden to speak to His Holiness.
What's your advice? Speak. I'd like to ask you something. Please permit me, in honor of your jubilee, to enter Carmel under age. I forbid you to say a... Do you know who this child is? I do, Your Holiness. The superiors are now examining her request. Yeah, well, my dear child, you must do as the superiors decide. Oh, Holy Father, if you said yes, they would accept me. You will enter Carmel if God wills it. God willed it. Well, my reverend mothers, you may now sing the Te Deum. As delegate to the bishop, I present to you this 15-year-old child whose admission you've allowed. I shall pray that she lives up to your expectations. Let me remind you that if she doesn't, you alone will bear the responsibility. We shall help you with your things, sister. Please don't come in. We are not here to resume family life.
do you think of the new one? Oh, much too young and not very strong. Two Martins were enough, but three, that's too much. Sister Elizabeth, would you be so kind as to take a blanket to the cell of Sister Therese of the Infant Jesus? You're not taking it yourself? You should be happy to get your little sister back. Sister Therese herself pointed out that we are no longer back home at Guisane. Anyway, she is visiting our mother priory. Never forget that you entered Carmel to live your life in imitation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You must love yourself, for he is there, ever present. Remember, it is not enough simply to respect the silence. You should seek it. It's silence that brings peace and comfort. Since he who lives in solitude has no other enemy but himself. Yes, Reverend Mother. Is it true that you know the whole imitation of Christ by heart? Yes, I do, Mother. Very well. Recite for me one of the chapters. The love of Jesus above all other things. Blessed is he who understandeth that he must love Jesus, and he must despise himself for Jesus' sake. He must renounce all that he loveth for his beloved. For Jesus will be loved above all other things. Thou must one day be separated from all, whether thou wilt it or wilt not. Good. I see it will not be necessary to remind you of the words of his lordship's delegate. Dear gracias. Sister Mary of the Angels, I place in your hands our new postulant. An outstanding nature. Oh, yes. Outstanding. But proud, too. Don't be discouraged. You must work without shrinking from even the most menial tasks. All roads lead to God, especially the most humble. Mother Genevieve of St. Therese, the foundress of our community. She's an angel. Is that all you've done? It is plain to see our cloisters are being swept by a child. It's a disgrace. After recreation, remove that cobweb. Be more careful in the future. Yes, Reverend Mother. Didn't I say she'd be good for nothing? Mother Genevieve is begging you to go speak to her. It 
is difficult in the beginning. If things are too hard, come to see me once in a while. I'll tell to help you, my son. How can I ever thank you, my good mother? Certain of our sisters appear to be imperfect. They are either novices, or else sisters who are suffering from some painful malady. I'm beginning to realize, Mother, that a sister who is sick does more in accomplishing part of her duty than a sister found in body and mind who accomplishes all. Well, I'm pleased to see that you've understood, my child. I entered here without any illusions, Mother. I shall expect nothing but from God. I know that my Carmel shall be my way of the cross. Please follow me. I'll show you to the kitchen. Oh, the dog, the dog. Me dog. Take him away, sister. I haven't the courage. Please forgive me. It seems to me that you're not giving your prayer all the concentration required. It is especially regrettable since it's been reported to me that you've been boasting on several occasions of wanting to be a saint. Is that correct? Yes, Reverend Mother. Such presumption. Confine yourself to not offending God. Temper your desires with humility. But Reverend Mother, I do not find such desires intemperate. Because our Lord told us to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Do you think it's enough merely to do what you have to do to become a saint? It would be too easy. Our Lord asked more of his children. Go now and do penance.
little one. Though it isn't the season, I would wish everything to be white or covered with snow. What are you asking for? I am asking for God's mercy, the poverty of the order, and the company of the sisters. Have you come here of your own accord and of your own free will to receive the habit of this order? I have, Your Lordship. Do you wish to enter this order for the love and fear of our Lord? I do, for the grace of God and the prayers of the sisters.
Your uh, dear father is very ill. They've taken him to the hospital Beau Sauveur at Caen. Oh, my God. I'm afraid to tell the news to Therese. What a blow this will be to her. Yes. Yesterday she was saying, I don't understand saints who don't love their parents. Anyone can see that you have more good will in you than strength. And you, Sister Saint Pierre, you especially lack indulgence. Were you given permission to break the silence? What's going on? Please forgive me, Mother. For 16 days, Sister Saint Pierre has been browbeating me. Go back to your cell. Mother, with your permission, I'll do all I can to help Sister Saint Pierre. Good. Too young. Much too young. What a way to hold a person. You're much too clumsy. This is a cousin of Sister Therese. He's been married to Dr. Lanier. Why, yes, everyone's talking about it. Well, then Sister Therese, too, is getting married. Here's the announcement she's composed. An announcement? God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, sovereign and spiritual ruler of the world, and the glorious Virgin Mary, queen of the heavenly court, hereby announce the spiritual marriage of their noble son, Jesus, Lord of Lords, and king of kings, with the maiden Therese Martin. Henceforth, I, Sister Therese of the infant Jesus, make my profession and promise of chastity, poverty, and obedience to God our Lord, to the Blessed Virgin, and to you, Mother Prioress. Sixty years ago, that te diem was sent for me. And perhaps tonight I shall hear it sung in heaven. Do you cry? I'm so sorry that you weren't with me when I took my veil. My heart was there. I've been watching you for a long time now. At this moment, I'm taking the place of God by your side. 
And I can assure you, Therese, that he's very pleased with you. You have learned to master yourself and to bear many painful experiences. It is you who have consoled me, Mother. You who've been suffering for seven years. Not for seven years, Sister Therese. It's been over 40 years, yes. But nobody would have suspected, nobody, if I had not fainted that night in front of you. How you must have suffered, Mother. Much more and much less than one imagines. Conspicuous wounds are more embarrassing than painful. The main thing, Sister Therese, is to be at peace with oneself. I have always been at peace. At peace with myself. In life. As in death. Everything is in me. It's enough to want and to have the great assurance. The very great assurance. The assurance that God is only mercy and benevolence. That the yoke of the Lord is gentle and his burden is light, certain, with peace and with joy. Remember, Always, my child, that our God is the God of peace. teardrop of a saint. After Mother Genevieve's death, Teresa's sister Pauline is elected prioress. It was to be expected. Our new prioress has given a difficult task to her sister. Just think, instructing novices at her age. Sister Marie. It is not for you to pass judgment on our new prioress. Her choice of Sister Therese was dictated by no other motive than the welfare of the community. Everything seems to be perfect. Now light the candles and make sure that the flowers are in place. I'll go and tell our mother prior. Oh, Sister Therese, with no more matches. Let me show you.
just a small lamp, hardly a light, produced all these flames. And these will, in turn, light an infinity of others and illuminate perhaps the whole world. Each of us resembles that insignificant light. you're here, Doctor. The bell is no longer necessary to announce a visitor, huh? Oh, no, Doctor. There are only three healthy sisters left in Carmel. Sister St. Pierre is much weaker. This epidemic's getting worse than ever. I haven't been able to get any sleep in two days. Thank you, Sister. Sister St. Pierre is dead. Where is Sister Martha of Jesus? She must come to help us. I'll go call her. Dear Gracia. Sister Elizabeth needs your help in the infirmary. Why, you're burning with fever, Sister Therese. Please don't bother about me, Sister. Go to the infirmary. But, Sister Therese, Mother Maria of Gonzog may need my help. One of the essential rules of our community is that we must never show preference for one or the other of our companions. Sister Therese, our mother Pryor's I shall report to her afterwards. I'd prefer to be censured or even expelled from the convent rather than fail in my duty. Now go quickly to the infirmary. Why have you hidden your suffering from me? Who ordered you to wear that iron cross? Our Mother Mary of Gonzac. Once I too wore that small cross when I first became a nun. But I gave it up long ago. The great penances were not meant for us. Are you having trouble with your novices, sister? There are those that I'm forced to take by the skin, <laughs> and others by the tips of their wings. Here's what Dr. de Cornier gave me during his last visit. Is it true, Sister Therese, that you've been raising protests against certain modifications that I advised Sister Madeleine to perform? Yes, Reverend Mother. Aren't you aware that the greatest saints modify themselves? I believe that if God had really willed it, 
Sister Mary Madeleine would not have been sick for so little. I pity all those who are here who refuse to battle against the flesh. Spiritual combat seems to be much more important. On pretext of mortification, one commits excesses which are injurious to one's health and interfere with the performance of one's duty. What difference does they contribute to our salvation? They too often lead to a desire to gratify oneself. Ours is a life of death, Mother. We mustn't do anything which might either preoccupy our minds or keep us from reaching God. What are you trying to do, Sister Therese? To question the principles of our mother, Therese of Avila? To behave like a revolutionary? To reform Carmel? To listen to God. If all souls called to perfection had first before entering heaven to apply these macerations, our Lord would have told us. And we would have inflicted them upon ourselves. But he told us that there are many mansions in his father's house. If there's one for the great, there must be one for his smaller children. Our place is there. Beware, Sister Therese. There are saints who are afraid to incur damnation. Tell me why you haven't that fear. Small children cannot incur damnation. Good only comes with obedience. To give you one example, among others, you still persist and asking for communion every day. We have our laws, Sister Therese, and they are written for eternity. During my lifetime, Mother, you may force me to respect the laws. But after I am gone, I will make you change your mind. several months, but she bears it for the sake of her unbelieving brethren. Thus, she will bring back to the faith many non-believers. My little mother, I obeyed your wish. I'm writing my childhood memories. But tonight... You are in doubt, sister. You are before a wall which is hiding heaven. Am I still certain that there really is a heaven? Look at St. Paul. See how much he wandered before finding the road to Damascus. Yes. But to withstand such an attack against faith, one must be a real martyr. Isn't it too much for a small soul like mine? No. You have said it yourself. The reward for perfect faith is not success. It is trial.
You dream of light. You hope one day to emerge from the mists wherein you are languishing. Forward, forward, rejoice in the death which will give you not what you hope for, but a still deeper night, the night of everlasting nothingness. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You compare yourself to God. What have you done but refuse the life he gave you? You wish to be a saint and you struggle in the darkness. I give you my peace. Abide in my love. To reach him, what do you bring him? Save your empty hands. You are weak, Therese, weak as a reed. In this living body, which is the church, there are the head, the limbs, the eyes, and the hands. There are those who think, those who work, those who heal, and those who spread the word. But be zealous for the better gifts, and I show unto you a yet more excellent way, the way of charity. Yes, the church is a living body. She has a head and members. Thus she has a heart, a heart that suffers. A heart that loves, a heart that spreads light throughout the whole body. My vocation. I have finally found it. My vocation is love. I have at last found my place. And that place, oh my God, it is you who gave it to me. In the heart of the church, my mother, I shall be loved. And thus I shall be all. One day, a generous donor sends a rather unusual gift to Carmel. Don't touch it, please, sister. Looks like the devil himself. <laughs> Let me handle this. It's not at all surprising that he should resist. He's the only one here who hasn't made a vow of obedience to our mother prioress. <laughs> here. Take this to the kitchen and have a stew made of it. <laughs> oh. Sister Therese. You no more consider my advice than my solicitude. You must be frozen. Oh, no. On the contrary. I've never felt so warm. If it continued snowing, I'd begin again every day. Who wants to keep on washing? And who prefers coming with me to prepare the ornaments on the altar? Sister Therese, we'd all prefer helping you with the altar things. What shall we do? It shouldn't be so difficult to decide. What it costs you to wash in cold water is what it costs the others. Therefore, do it. By taking the humblest places, we practice mortification for ourselves and charity towards others.
In the meantime, Mother Marie of Gonzaga is again elected prioress. Probably a slight chill, Sister Therese. However, if because of this illness you wish to receive dispensation from the Lenten fasting, you may. No, Mother. I shall finish the Lenten season as I began it. You see? I placed it on Hanoi. You perhaps know why. But, Sister Therese, it will be weeks before you arrive there. A month and a half, maybe even longer. Sister Therese, Father Rouleau is here. The missionary who's leaving for China? Yes. He's in the visiting room. Sister Therese of the Infant Jesus? Yes, brother. I bless your mother, Prioress, for having chosen for me a spiritual sister whom I may write. Our mother is very kind. Your letters will be a great consolation. A consolation? I was hoping to be transferred to Hanoi. You've come to tell me that they've refused my request. I know that your mother has very great need of you here. She thought above all that the scabbard was not as sturdy as the blade, and that it would be thrown overboard before reaching China. It's really not convenient to have a soul, and also a body. You won't have the lesser part, sister. Yes, I know. You will be a missionary of action, and I a missionary of love. waiting is arriving. It's not very frightening. On the contrary. I will go and tell our mother Pius. No. I beg you not to say a word. Our mother knows that I'm not well. If she hasn't sent for the physician, then it is the will of God. wrong in hiding from me your condition. Why are you worried, my little mother? God only sent me this heavy cross at the moment I was able to bear it. Before, it might have been a source of discouragement. However, today, my mansion is entirely pacified. Our mother Priors has sent for Dr. de Cornier. You will be cured. If God wills it. And I'm not sure he is willing. But it's not important. For it is his will that I love. I commit myself to God.
temperature is still very high. Continue the vesication and the hot needle. The poor child's back is completely sore. It must be done. Of course, she must not under any circumstances leave the infirmary. Is it serious, doctor? I know you're very brave, mother. There isn't much hope now. She has enough for those who haven't any. Mm. I saw this coming long ago. There's nothing I can do for her. Sister Therese of the Infant Jesus is no more of this world. You have so much courage, Sister Therese. No, no, I haven't enough courage. I'm like a soldier who, hearing compliments on his bravery and realizing all the while he's just a coward, finally becomes ashamed of those compliments and would like to earn them. I must go now, but try to rest. In case you need me, don't hesitate to send for me. Sister Therese, I would like to ask you a question, a delicate one. If I don't much more wish to die than to live, I let Almighty God choose for me. Anyway, I don't know what more I should have in heaven than I have now. I would see God, it's true. But as for being with God, I am with him on earth. Sisters, I beg of you. You're fatiguing, Sister Therese. Since they're always disturbing you, I wonder how you're able to put two sentences together. Well, I'm writing on charity. It's the moment to give proof of it. Charity for all is all there is on earth. We love God in the measure that we practice it. The village feast. Why don't you rest, sister? Just two more lines. Two lines, I promise.
gather this, he gathers you. I have nothing better to offer him. I can see from your eyes what you're thinking, Mother. Then they are right in bidding us to keep them lowered. Do you really believe that if your little Therese be taken away, it is I who... I think that we took care of her a bit too late. That's all. No, you're wrong, Reverend Mother. For seven years I've said nothing, but today it's my duty to justify my conduct. Do you remember? I was the first one to uphold against the whole world her admission to Carmel. But at the very first, I realized that one could not treat like a child a soul of that caliber. I know I was severe. I never spared her at all. I also humiliated her voluntarily. I admit it. But without that, would she be a little faint today? To attain that end, she needed help from no one. He is above watching over her. I was only the instrument of our Lord's will. In that case, Mother, you have no further need of consolation. God will judge us. You have nothing to fear, Mother. He will have judged Therese before you. My humblest prayers have been answered. And so the biggest, the dire death of love, will be answered as well. How is it you're able, sister, to stay so calm, to remain so unafraid? One may be afraid of death. But one mustn't fear what comes after. You will look down on us, won't you? No. I shall descend. Come closer to me, sisters. I feel that my mission is just beginning. My mission is to give my little way to save souls. If my desires are granted, my heaven will take place here on earth till the end of the world. I will. I will spend my heaven in doing good here on earth. Mother, I realize all that I owe you.
Oh, Reverend Mother, the air about is failing me. When will I breathe the air of heaven? Never will I know how to die. Oh, Reverend Mother, prepare me to die a good death. My dear child, you are prepared to appear before God. You have understood the virtue of humility. Yes, I've only been searching for the truth. I've understood humility of the heart and that the kingdom of heaven is within all of us. I'd never thought that it was possible to suffer so much. Never. Never. I'm only able to explain it by the ardent desire that I have to save souls. And it was you who said, we must leave that to heaven. Jesus, our Savior, died of love. And you know how great was his agony. Look, stars. I was sure of it. All my wishes have been granted. Bless you, sisters. She will understand. She knows what it is to suffer, as I do. The time of the singing of birds. I love thee. Thank you. 
Nothing is finished. All is just beginning. No objection could be raised to the innumerable proofs that Therese had kept her promise to spend her heaven in doing good on earth. On May 17, 1925, Pope Pius XI canonizes St. Therese of the Infant Jesus. Her childhood prophecy has come true. Already patron saint of missions, Therese was designated second patron saint of France on an equal footing with Joan of Arc. Nevertheless, the greatest saint of modern times will always be to each of us, little Therese. <laughs>